sport and Ghanaian footballer Benjamin Echampong says he's been duped out of a million dollars by a football club once and he's determined um, to ensure that it doesn't happen again, especially by the same organization. The Ghanaian has been deprived of more than one million US dollars in a row with Egyptian giant Zamalek dating back to the year 2018. And despite the Court of Arbitration for Sport ordering the five-time African champions to pay him a similar sum two months ago, he says he's yet to receive a cent. My colleague George Addo Jr. spoke to the BBC's P.S. Edward for more details on this case. All right, so uh, Piers, thank you very much for your time. And we have been following so much of your work that you're doing, and we know that you have been keeping close tabs on this one. Um, after all the shenanigans between a champion and his former club, Samalek, the cost of arbitration for sport did rule that they had to pay him a sum of 1.1 you know, million. And the key thing here, though, is that he hasn't received the money. I wanted you to take us through the twist from um, that point. Absolutely. Well, to, to cut a very long story short, as you know, in um, he joined Zanamek in 2017. He, he had his issues with the club as early as 2018 and in August 2018 he terminated his contract which he maintains he was forced to do because uh, the club did not pay him money, the club uh, barred him from training and the club did not register him for the forthcoming season, some of the reasons. Uh, the club disputes some of those but in December the Court of Arbitration for Sport found in a champion's favour and ordered the Zamalek to pay him $1.1 million. And then we have the twist whereby a champion's former agent, Nader El Sayed, a captain of Egypt, uh, one point a lesser man who won the 1998 Africa Cup of Nations, um, said that uh, or entered into an agreement with Zamalek whereby a champion supposedly agreed to receive just $250,000. Zamalek uh, wrote to FIFA sending them various documents uh, which purported to show that El Sayed was still representing a champion, which a champion disputes. El Sayed has told the BBC he is still the player's agent. Um, and the long and short of it is FIFA, when it meets on Thursday, is going to have to determine whether the documents it has received from Zamalek, uh, which basically say that they've come to a deal with El Sayed, who is still representing a champion, whether those documents are true. Uh, if they find them true, then obviously things will go in one direction. If they find them untrue, then things will go in a very different direction. But really, yes, how difficult would it be then for um, a champion to prove that these documents are false? Well, he maintains that he has not seen the data since 2018. Uh, so therefore, how could he have signed these documents to have made them true? Um, I've had a conversation with officials in the Ghanaian embassy in Cairo. Uh, who, who met El Sayed uh, after CAS gave its ruling, and they said um, that El Sayed was wanting a, an official Ghana embassy stamp on some of the documents bearing a champion's name. Uh, the Ghana and embassy officials refused to do so. El Sayed supposedly said that uh, a champion had coronavirus, which was why he could not attend. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to come down to handwriting experts to, to show whether or not these documents are true or false. Just stop. We know that he's been heavily backed by FIFA. In fact, um, we know quite a number of them are hoping to push this. What kind of support can they offer, and how telling will that be? You know, when FIFA finally lands the ruling. Well, I think they can they can offer invaluable support. Really, as we know, FIFA are the global. Players, football, or Global Footballers Union, they've been helping a champion along the way. They told him that when he was barred from training to take pictures to show that he w did attend training. Uh, a champion maintains he had a row with the then Zamalek club president, Mortada Mansour, who threw a bottle of water at him. Zamalek says he didn't. A champion has pictures of security guards outside Mortada Mansour's office at the time saying that he could not leave the premises. So he was documenting things as he went along. Uh, and that is absolutely the key. And then from the financial point of view, it's it's important to state that FIFO helped a champion fund his appeal to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Now, the problem for, for many sports people uh, in Africa itself is they don't have the money to do so. It costs something like $50,000 roughly to appeal to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. A lot of athletes, a lot of sports people just don't have that money. So FIFO helped him with that and uh, obviously cast ruled in his favour. So it is huge help to the player that FIFO have helped him along the way. Right, Piers, how bad are the consequences then for Zamalek if they fail uh, to win or convince FIFA? 
Exactly. If they fail to win, conv to, to fail con to, to convince FIFA that the documents are, are correct, uh, Zamalek are very, very likely to receive a transfer ban. Um, uh, they uh, and if and they will receive a transfer ban until they pay the player his money. Now, if they continue to not pay the player, there's also the possibility of, of either a points deduction in their league or relegation in their league, which obviously would be a huge issue in Egypt, where they are, you know, the most successful, second most successful team in the country, and of course in Africa itself, having won five Champions League titles or African crowns. So the repercussions could be enormous. Um, they just have to hope very much that their documents are indeed true and, and that they are found to be true by FIFA. But uh, FIFA have got a bit of work to do to work out exactly who's telling the truth here. Is it the player? Is it the club? Piers, I'm sure you'll be following this, speaking to all the parties uh, you know, involved. It looks, does it really look like the champion is so determined to get us through? He's absolutely determined to get us through, and, and I've spoken to various uh, uh, lawyers, uh, so, some of them at FIFA, and they say many players simply have given up by now. They're not prepared to take on these clubs, even if they're owed something like, let's say, $800,000. Some of them just settled for ten dollars or $20,000 because they don't want the time uh, it takes, which can be anything from one to two years. And they don't want to stump up the legal fees, which I said can can come on into tens of thousands of dollars. So, so what's different about this case is he's taking his his fight all the way. He feels wronged, um, and he wants to do this to help other footballers in future who have similar issues, and to to show them that they should be fighting. It will really be landmark if it, if that's happening goes in his favour. But tell me, you've been following these proceedings for some time, and of course, cases like of this nature, what kind of outcome should we expect? I think we're going to have a delay tomorrow when FIFA meets, um, and I think we, I, I, I think it's going to take a few months for us to get a resolution on this case. Um, I listen. I could be completely wrong, and, and FIFA might make its verdict tomorrow, and then it's all done. But I would imagine after what they got sent by Zamalek earlier this month, the three documents showing that Zamalek had come to this deal with with um, El Sayed. It's up to FIFA to decide, but uh, I, I, a quote in mind is the one from the, the FIFA pro lawyer, Roy Vermeer, who says, it, you know, just weeks after getting a ruling that he's fought for for years, whereby he receives $1.1 million, why on earth would the player then accept $250,000 instead? And let's not forget as well that El Sayed stands to make $50,000, 20% of that $250,000, if the money goes uh, to the player. So... I think serious questions have to be asked, and it's clearly not in the player's interest to forego anything, you know, in excess of, let's say, $750,000, $850,000. Why would you do that, is the question. Yes, thank you very much, Piers, for your time. We'll see how this goes. And that's it for sports. Bar.